Welcome back to Rap Sheet Hollywood, where today we are on our social justice kick. We are talking with no other than attorney Benjamin Crump in West Los Angeles today. How are you, sir? Thank you, man. Thank you so much for being here. Honored to be here. So I want to just talk, you know, obviously you're really well known for starting out or defending uh, Trayvon Martin's family you know, and really represent his interests. I want to know how that came about. And then if you could talk to us a little bit about his case and then some of these other cases that have been really kind of plaguing us that we see on the news and national media. Let's talk about that. Certainly. Uh, um, when I think about Trayvon, it's hard to believe it's been five years. Uh, as the lead attorney for the family of Trayvon Martin, it was his mother, Sabrina Fulton, and especially his father, Tracy Martin, who represented not just Trayvon, but all of us with such dignity and grace in the face of such adversity. Mm -hmm. I mean, to lose your child in such a manner by a neighborhood watch volunteer who shot him in the heart while he was walking home on the phone from 7-Eleven and uh, then not be held accountable. I mean, it's just heartbreaking, uh, but it was his father Tracy Martin, who called me and told me about what happened to his son and said, because this thing called Stand Your Ground, they're not going to arrest him. And it was, uh, at that time, I said, hold on, let me make sure I understand the story. Mm -hmm. Your teenage son, 17 years old, walking home from the 7-Eleven, unarmed. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, sir, all he had was a bag of Skittles and a can of iced tea. And the neighborhood watch volunteer with a nine millimeter gun shoots him in the heart and kills him and the police didn't arrest him. I told him, you didn't need me. You don't don't worry about this. They're gonna arrest him because Paul, I'm an officer of the court. I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. We have to believe in the system that it, it works fairly because that's the only way we can do we be part of it. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. And so in our neighborhoods, you know, you don't have to have uh, the smoking gun, you don't have to have evidence. I mean, it could be an innuendo. Mm -hmm. It could be a rumor. Somebody said you fit the description mm -hmm. and they will arrest you right then. So you have this grown man kill this child, has the proverbial smoking gun in his hand, mm -hmm. self-confessed killer, and they let him go home and sleep in his bed. It was outrageous. And so I told Mr. Martin, they're gonna do it. Um, give it a couple of days. A couple of days go by, he called me back, and uh, man, Tracy Martin really loved this son. So, you know, black men get a, a bad rap talking about we don't love our children. Mm -hmm. If you ever listen to him talk about his son, mm -hmm. you'll see how much this strong black man loves his son. Wow. wow. Uh, but he said, Mr. Crump, I told you they weren't going to do anything uh, because they're staying your ground law. And it was right there, Paul, with a grieving, broken-hearted father and me on the phone, mm -hmm. uh, nobody looking, nobody watching. This is before, uh, you know, LeBron James put on the hoodie right. and took the picture with the Miami Heat basketball team and right. said, right. Uh, we are all Trayvon, and then it got retweeted five million times. This is before the Change.org petition was started by the Howard University law student who said the killer of Trayvon Benjamin Martin should at least be arrested and bought to face the witnesses and the evidence against them in a court of law, which then got signed by over three million people becoming the largest petition in change.org history. Wow. This is before President Barack Obama said, if I had a son, he would look like Trayvon. Wow. This is before it became the number one news story in the world in 2012. Mm -hmm. It's just me and this father on the phone and nobody watching save God and he want to know if I'm going to answer the bell. Uh, if I'm going to try to use the blessings he gave us to try to make a difference for the least of ye. And so when I stepped out to try to do the right thing. What did you say in that situation? I mean, that's a lot of pressure on well, you. You know what? I, it was deep because my law partner, Daryl Parsons, and I, we talked about it. And mm -hmm. Daryl is the business uh, manager of the law firm. And he said, you know, we're going to spend all our 
resources, all our time, all our money, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day, they still probably won't arrest them. Mm -hmm. And I said, you, you're right, Dara, but we got to do something. If not you and I, then who? Mm -hmm. And at that point, we made the decision to take on the case, and God took over from there. Yeah. All that other stuff happened because of God. I never tried to take credit for it. It's God that makes those things happen. And when we took that case, believe it or not, because we're the civil lawyers, mm -hmm. people get confused that for some reason that it's the prosecutor who charged George Zimmerman. They're the only people who can put him in jail and convict him. Mm -hmm. We did the civil suit, but when we took the case, we were not even thinking about monetary recovery. Mm -hmm. But because of making sure that we let people know that Trayvon Martin life mattered. Mm -hmm. And this is before Black Lives Matter, we were saying right. Trayvon Martin life mattered. Yes. We were able to make sure his family got some measure of justice in the civil mm -hmm. aspects of the case. Mm -hmm. And so we got to remember that, y'all, when people take a stand and go out and fight, we got to support them. Right. And it's these prosecutors who are not letting people be held accountable who kill our children, not these great civil rights lawyers who are fighting in the trenches. We need to support them mm -hmm. to fight for our children's lives because there was a time in America that nobody would take these cases because you understood when you go up against the police in America, and you got to understand the history of the police in America. Right. You right. know, they're not going to let you prevail. And so when people are brave enough and courageous enough to do this, we got to support them. We got to stand with them. Mm -hmm. We got to lift them up. Yeah. We can't try to tear them down because, I mean, it's a lonely, hard battle when you're in that courtroom mm -hmm. and they got all the resources of the city, mm -hmm. all the government resources on the police side, mm -hmm. and then you fighting for this little black life here to say it matters. And so that's what it's about, man. Now you touched on it. Just explain to us, you know, what the difference is between a criminal trial and, and a civil, you know, just kind of explain that a little bit. Certainly. Uh, you, we have to remember from our high school civics that it's only the government that can take your constitutional rights to liberty away. Nobody else can do that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, none of these personal private lawyers for the family control what happened in the criminal courtroom. That's only your elected district attorney, your elected prosecutors. So if you don't like what happened in Trayvon Martin, if you don't like what happened in Philando Castillo, if you don't like what happened in Terrence Crutcher, if you don't like what happened in Michael Brown and Ferguson, you don't like what happened in Eric Garner and Staten Island, then what you should do is start to form a group to say, we're going to get this person out of office. Mm -hmm. We're going to expose the injustice. We're going to make sure we vote. We're going to make sure we register people to vote. And we're going to do this in the name of Trayvon, in the name of Michael Brown, in the name of Sandra Bland, in the name of Alicia Thomas. I mean, if you really want to do something other than just be a critic, because the easiest thing in the world to do is to sit there and be a critic. The big thing to do is to speak truth to power and act truth to power to do something about it and it is within us that we can do something about it we can be the change we want to see and when you step out for right when you just step out and try to do the right thing and try to be uh, positive and say I know it's gloomy right now mm -hmm. God takes over from there I mean, he just wants us to be courageous enough to use the blessings and the talents that he gave all of us and try to make a difference for our children mm -hmm. for the least of ye. Now, you just ran off a list of so many, you know, different cases that we see, high profile cases of, you know, injustice taking place. Um, just wondering, were you able to work on any of those cases that you just talked about? Uh, tell us about some of the some of the Certainly. other high profile cases uh, that you worked on. Seem like all of them become high profile these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether it be uh, Michael Brown and Ferguson, obviously, that was a, a huge case yeah. in uh, America in 2014 and that gave birth to a lot of the phenomena we have with Black Lives Black Matter, Lives Matter yeah. Hands Up United. Yeah. And all these don't shoot, don't shoot. Hands yeah. Up, Don't Shoot. And then Terrence Crutcher case, you know, it's Hands Up, Don't Shoot on video. And we see even with video, whether it's Terrence Crutcher or Philando Castile, mm -hmm. who my good friend Judge Hatchett represents, 
on video, they still aren't convicting them. And so it's these type of cases we got to stand up for. The Oklahoma City uh, Hose Claw rape case mm -hmm. where the police officer was convicted of raping these black women in Oklahoma yeah. City. Yes. You know, I represent eight of those women and it, you know, that was, uh, has precedence because it's one of the few times in America where police have done horrible things to black people mm. that they were actually held accountable. Right. So it was not only a huge victory for this shero named mm -hmm. Jenny Liggins who had the courage to report the police officer for sexually assaulting her, but it was a, a victory for all women mm -hmm. because in that case it was almost being argued that there was nothing that could have been done to these black women mm -hmm. that we would define as rape. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was crazy. A serial rapist with a badge going through the poor black community, uh, victimizing people, sexually assaulting mm -hmm. these women. If it was any other community, Paul, it would have been a, a national crisis. I mean, it would have yeah. been on yeah. CNN, yeah. Fox, yeah. Uh, MSNBC. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been on New York Times, USA Today, all on the magazines. But because... I don't know these black women. Nobody was saying anything. Mm -hmm. You know, Nancy Grace wasn't up there crying for them like right, she right. do all the other victims. Mm -hmm. And so it was us. We had to take control with social media to get the word out. And it was young women from the University of Oklahoma. It was the people on social media. It was Kerry Washington, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, yeah, yeah. famous actress who gave a damn enough to use her uh, platform mm -hmm. to say these women lives and their life experiences matter right. and it's when we take those stands that's how we get justice that's the only way we were able to get justice in that case all of us have to stand united and say this we will defend we will defend the honor and the dignity of our women civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump how do you prepare for a case like this you know how, how do you actually prepare for something like that what goes into that well, you pray. Mm -hmm. You pray and you say, Lord, guide my steps mm -hmm. uh, that we would be able to say the things that are not only acceptable in this courtroom, but acceptable to you mm -hmm. for the life that has been taken in many of these wrongful death cases. But you also, you try to prepare, prepare, prepare mm -hmm. to the young future civil rights lawyers, social engineers for change. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to go in that courtroom and you want to make sure that you are overly prepared. You want to know more about the case than the prosecutor, the judge, mm -hmm. uh, the insurance lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to even know more about the case than your client. Mm -hmm. And it happened to them, mm -hmm. but you want to be that prepared mm -hmm. because, you know, John Johnson, the founder of Ebony Magazine, said it best. There's no substitute for excellence. Mm. And there is no denying excellence. Right. And so when you have the audacity to be excellent, things will prevail for you. And also, I want to let people know what happens in this criminal justice system can't be the end all of our legacy. Mm -hmm. That can't be the definition of our legacy. Mm -hmm. We have to define our own legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to applaud mm -hmm. the person for going into the arena. And we know the cards are stacked against us in this society. It was stacked against us when we came over on slave ships. Mm -hmm. And it's still stacked against us today. Right. But we got to applaud people for standing up, taking the fight on. Mm -hmm. I, I love the hip-hop artists when they talk about, you know, we have to fight the power. Uh, we talked about Tupac. Tupac mm -hmm. was given the blueprint for America, especially black America, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. He's more relevant today than 20 years ago mm -hmm. because he was talking about this police brutality in our community and how we don't get due process in the courtroom. Well, Attorney Benjamin Crump, um, I know that you've been taking our fight, you know, out to the people. You've been taking it on the forefront. Where are some other places that, you know, we might be able to see you, you know, what are some other things you got going on? You mentioned Tupac. 
And I know that there's an A and E show that fortunately we've been able to work on. It's uh, it's looking at the investigation of Tupac. Who, who killed, killed Tupac? Tupac. Who yeah. killed Tupac on A and E that's coming out? And so just talk a little bit about that really quickly. Yeah, and the reason I think that's so relevant uh -huh. to today, yeah. because we got to remember when Tupac was killed in Las Vegas and what was the most high profile famous drive-by shooting in history mm -hmm. that he didn't get his due process of the law neither he didn't get the fair administration of justice and so when you think about one of the most well respected most well loved most celebrated hip hop artists in America at the time he could get killed and not get due process, then what hope is there for all these little black and brown people when they get injustices brought to them? How do they get justice? So we are talking a lot in that docuseries about the due process of the law. The Constitution of America is not just for the affluent and the white people, it's for Everybody in America is for the little black people, the little brown people, anybody who draws their first breath as an American. And so in this series, we really look at aspects of the investigation that was done in the Tupac Shakur murder and what wasn't done and how they should have been able to solve this case and find out who killed Tupac Shakur. Uh, because you really want to believe that if Tupac can get due process, it's a good example for us all yeah. that, you know, we all can get it because he was so representative of us all. Um, just want to say thank you, brother, for this hard work that you're doing, man. You, you, you make me proud and you inspire so many others. It's been a pleasure working with you on this Tupac show. And uh, I just look forward to the many more good things that are coming and the fact that we're going to continue to fight and that you're going to push people to make sure that they're in that jury room and that they are supporting uh, the system as they should in order to get equal justice. You have to be a part, an active participant. Yep. And so I, I, I appreciate that. And, and I want to also say yep. Reginald Hudlin did a masterful job of directing the Thurgood Marshall movie that I have a cameo in. Yeah, you're, you're in that, that too, too, right? Yeah, because yeah, that was a work. powerful film about Thurgood Marshall and we're standing on his shoulders yeah. but if we think we had it hard yeah. Thurgood really had it hard wow. and he went in courtrooms knowing they were going to lose and knowing that he might be killed but he did it anyway because he was trying to set the record yeah. and so many people, many of our black people got to understand it was about taking on the fight yeah. knowing that it was going to be a daunting task yeah. that you may not prevail yeah. but you fight anyway Shout out to Reginald Hudlin for just taking on that iconic, you know, role of really telling the story of Thurgood Marshall, who's been so influential to so many. But, you know, even as I learned about Thurgood Marshall, you know, it was a lot more to the man than we know, you know. Absolutely. And so this this film is going to really break that down. Um, I don't know. Are you at liberty to talk about any of us? I know you got a lot of stuff going on and uh, hey, man. <laughs> you can't you know, talk about. Uh, I, I got a lot of battles that we got to go yes, fight sir. for our children. That's what it's I'll come back and we'll keep talking. That's what it is. <laughs> Right. Rap She Hollywood, the livest, the freshest commentary in Hollywood, but of course with a hip-hop flair. I'm Poop Diesel and signing out.